In this video, I will be covering the use of ProjectWise Explorer in the Iowa DOT workspace. To access ProjectWise, you will use the icon on your desktop that looks like this. We'll double click on it to launch our ProjectWise. Upon launch, you will need to expand your ProjectWise main. Once you expand it, it will be prompting you to log in. For the DOT, we'll use the single window sign-on for authentication. Go select the checkbox and select login. Upon your initial login, you will be prompted with a uh, pop-up that says that you do not have a ProjectWise workspace created. If this is the case, go ahead and select Yes and let it create the ProjectWise workspace folder for you. This is the area that your uh, personal workspace will be used to download your data and files when you are working in ProjectWise. ProjectWise stores by default the last project directory that you were working in. So upon opening and expanding it, it should take you back to the last previous project that you are currently working in. To navigate through the projects, you can navigate by typing in the project identification number. The thing with this one is that you need to type it in in a fairly quick succession to get to it. So like if we wanted to get to like 26, we'll type in 26 real quick. But if I were to type in it in a slower manner, we could it would go two and then six and then you can see there it depending on the speed that you type it in it will get you to the area that you want to get to well, let's go back down here to where I was before so there's the right clicking in project wise is contextual based on if you're clicking on a folder or a document so if I right click on a folder I'll get the folder contextual pop-up menu for the right click I go down in here into my folder with my files. If I right click on a file, you're going to see I get different uh, right click pop up here. To create files, you will right click on your folder and use the copy seed. You right click, it brings up your copy seed file, and this can be covered in another video. You right click on your file you're going to have a open open as read only air and open with open is going to open it with whatever association that you have uh, associated with it by default through our uh, through our managed workspace if you're going to open as read only that'd be like if you're going to open into a file and just be looking at things you will not have any write access and you'll have very limited capabilities once you open a file this way to do an open with this is useful right now currently with the way things are if you need to open a file with the older SS10 or if you need to open it with connect you'll select the right click open with then it'll prompt you with this uh, document select dialog and you can choose which version of MicroStation that you want to open this with and it's the same thing with other programs Uh, if you are bringing in a file and you need to fix the references, you can do the right click and come down to your set. And you'll come in here and you're going to use your scan references and, and link sets. This will be covered in another video as well. This will heal your references so that it, it connects to the correct references that are in the project wise workspace that you had assigned outside of it when you had the document exported. The other functions on here, you have your co copy, you have a move to and a copy to, so you can move it to a folder or copy to another destination folder. And then within our actual window here, we also have abilities to view different document properties in this lower portion here. So here you can see our main document properties. If I select the folder here, let's go back up here to like the main project folder. You're going to see this will give you all of your project information here. And it 
dive back down in here into our folder here and then we'll look at this this file here and we're going to see the here's our work area property so this is going to be specific to the work folder so if you have different parents in here they're going to have different they're going to have the different uh, work work set properties We have our folder properties, so that's going to be for the folder that it's in. If your personal portal, this is going to be like when you log into your Connect Advisor. So if you if you go through this, go ahead and show you it. This brings just brings up the Connect Advisor within the Project Wise workspace. We have a preview of the file here, so this will give us a preview of each of the models. We can move in. We can zoom in and out. We can check each sheet model. You can check the working model. So this gives us just a real quick preview of what's in the file. We have our dependency viewer. This is kind of nice. This shows us how, how this file is interacting with other files. So you're going to see we have different references and we also have a link set here. So the link set relation is going to be applied once you apply it to the index of sheets for that or the sheet index for that work set. That's when it's going to get this link set relation. And that's going to be denoted with the small uh, it's, it's gonna be the small dark blue E here so when it has the small dark blue E here on the file that is showing that it has been added to a link set or added to that work set in the index of sheets if it has just the small E on it that shows that it has references in it so that's what is showing here it's got these references in it so if it does not have ones like these, these are like just some files that I've created that do not have any references. You can see they don't, and they have not been added to the link set, so they do not have either of those little symbols. Um, another thing to note here is when you do have access to a file here, uh, read if you have read-write access to it, you have access to it to edit it, it's going to have this little pencil here. If you do not have access to it, it'll have a little book symbol here. And that shows that it denotes that you have read-only access. Uh, let's see here. Then we also have our. Let's go and show you here. If for the non-project stuff, so just kind of like our W drive, we do have our highway drive here. So you can go into design, and we have our different design sections. So this has the same layout of our W drive, W highway drive here. So those, this would be good for storing things that are non-project related that you might share amongst other projects or share with other people within your section. Uh, the standards for uh, the new Connect version are going to be stored here in our Iowa DOT standards. It's going to be in our configurations here. And then organization civil. So now we've got our Iowa DOT standards here for like our cells and things like that. And then we have our workspace standards in here. Then up here we have, I'll show you a nice little tool here. If you go into your options, go into your settings, and we go into our user interface. And if you, there's this option here, so select reference documents dialog. If you select that, what it's going to do is when you go and you check out a file, it's going to check to make sure the if you've already have a workspace uh, going. If, the files within that workspace are current or if they need to be updated. So this would be kind of nice if you're working remotely to go ahead and have that enabled. So I'll go ahead and show that to you. When I go ahead and open up this A sheet, I'll just go ahead and open that. And you're going to see here that it's showing that these files here are up to date. So I do not need to recopy these out and re-download any of these files here. If it they're if it, they need to be updated, they'll be shown here that they need need to be updated. And then you, what you would do, you just select them, and then you would just select the copy out here, and then you would hit OK, and it would check out just that one. So since I don't have any here, I'll go ahead and show you that I don't need to check anything out. So you're going to see it's not going to download anything. It's just going to prepare the file. So this is kind of nice for working from remote.
so as you can see it didn't it didn't pop up the downloading files dialog here and everything it's just going to take a few seconds to load on my machine here so as you can see it's just it's just reading my local file since it's that pw main my folder and then this is the working directory that it's in So as you can see, it didn't have to download any of them. It just went straight open the model because all the models that and uh, files that I had were up to date. This gives us a good opportunity once it is comes up and opens. You're going to see here now, if it does have a check mark here, this is going to show that it's checked out to you. If somebody else has it checked out, it's going to show a little lock here. You'll actually be able to see who it is checked out right here. As you can see here in the reference style, it also shows when things are checked out, all of this updates as things are being checked out. Then in here, you're also going to have access control. So this is going to give you access, read and write access. So here's your read, here's your write. So if you only have read access, this is the symbol you're going to see. If you have write access, this is the symbol you're going to see. So these are different accesses that you might have to a file, and you can assign multiple groups, you can assign users, it's all done through this here, you can add a user, you can remove users, and you can apply the access rights to this folder or to the documents. The components tab here is not used for us. And then the final piece for working with this is going to be your local document organizer. Within this, you're going to see here, I have this file checked out. So this is going to be in your checked out documents. So this will show all documents that you would have checked out. You can then, I'll go ahead, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to close my document here. I'll go ahead and show you guys this. So like if you close something and it pops up, when you close it, it's going to ask you to check it in. If you check it in, this is going to be done if you've made any changes to that document and you want to save those changes for future. You can just update the server copy say you're going to be you know, at the end of the day you just want to update this update the the file for everybody else but you're going to be working in it the next day i would i would just update the server copy not check it in it would keep it locked and checked out to you then you could be working in it the next day if you've just been in the file looking at it for reference or just seeing what's going on poking around i would then go ahead and free it because that's gonna that what that's gonna do is it's not going to check it in it's going to just uh unassociate you to it and it's going to free that document and leave the document here in project wise the way it was before so in this example i'm just going to go ahead and close this so i can show you here in our local document browser if you do have documents that you've checked out and you're not aware of when you go to close your project wise this is what's going to pop up and when you're in here you can then go in here and you you right click on it and it'll give you the option to open that folder which will take you to the folder that it's located in or you can update the server copy like as I said before you'll do that if you're going to be working in the next day you don't want anybody else to get into it but you do want everybody else to see the changes that you've made you're going to check it in if you're at the end of the day somebody else may be working in it tomorrow you're not sure if you're going to be in it tomorrow but you do want everybody else to see the changes if you're going to check in and leave a copy, this is going to check it in, but it's going to leave a local copy on your machine. If you free and leave a copy, it's going to do the same thing. And then uh, freeing is just going to free it. It's going, to, it's, not, it's going to delete your local copy as well. So with this one, I did not make any changes, so I'm just going to go ahead and free it. And this one here... This is your uh, this is your copies. This is the copies that are copy. That's what we were talking about earlier when I when it says leave a copy. This is this is what all this stuff is. These are just kind of copies of files that have been used when I've been working with other files. I uh, really recommend this every week to go in here. What you'll do is you just come in here, select the first one, hit Control plus A to select all of them. And then once you selected them all, you can either come up here and click the purge copy, or you can right click and purge copy. I'll go ahead and show you. If you look down here in the bottom left, you're going to see the progress of it. It'll take a little bit, but I recommend doing this each week because these files can get corrupted at times. Uh, something might ding it, and it's, it becomes not compatible. The other 
other place that you're going to be looking at here is going to be this this button here. This is going to be the part that is going to be your actual workspace copies. You're going to do the same thing that you did in this one, where every week I would recommend coming into your workspace copies. You're going to see, look, I got 1,200 objects, 13, almost 1,300 objects in here. Same thing, select the first one, hit Control A, you'll right click and click Purge. I'm not going to do it this time because this one will take a little bit longer. And then the last option in here that you'd be uh, using is going to be the exports. So this this area is going to show anything that you have exported out and that you're going to, that you need to re re-import back in. And this will conclude our video of the project wise basics.